This bar has no windows and, and no, no doors, which offers you this chilling challenge to find a way out. <laughs> Those words are for the most part from Paul Fries, the voice actor who's iconic for many roles. He has 374 actor credits on IMDb for roles of Mary Poppins, Rocky and Pullwinkle. He played Santa and Jack Frost in some of the Rudolph movies, but most recognizable for his Disney park roles, including the narrator of Adventure Through Inner Space, brought to you by Monsanto. He is the voice of several pirate animatronics and the voice that says, dead men tell no tales. But by far the most memorable role of Paul Fries is the voice of the host of the Haunted Mansion, the ghost host. And today's cocktail ties in the Haunted Mansion and Disney, but my journey started with this glassware. These were made by Tiki Tony just very recently, and a lot of his work leans into Disney. On the glassware, there are nods to Jack Skellington, and to me, when I see the skeletons here, I think of the skeleton dance. As I was trying to find a cocktail befitting of this glass, I came across a few unofficial internet posts on the Chilling Challenge, a drink by Trader Sam's in 2016 that was served in the limited edition release of the Hitchhiker's Ghost mug. I've never seen a menu or any official recipe and all I could find was some posts online, including a podcast from years ago, and they all seem to be from the same source, with the oldest recipe from September 2016 on the website intercot.com, a Walt Disney World forum. The recipe calls for bitters, perno, ginger syrup, honey, lime juice, pineapple juice, and Smith & Cross rum. The recipe circulating online does not mention the amount of rum. One would assume we're looking at two ounces of Smith & Cross, but originally it may have been less. There's no reason for us not to do a full two ounces here. As for the bitters, just assuming we're looking at Angostura for this one, even though it's not specified in these recipes. You could use Pernod or Absinthe here, but in the actual historic drinks, the Don the Beachcomber template drinks, those recipes always specify for Pernod or Herb Saint since for some idiotic reasons, absinthe was banned and unavailable from 1912 to 2007. But before we get to the drink, I wanna know in the comments below, are you a pirates person or a mansion person? There's no wrong answer, but uh, you can tell a lot about a person depending on which one they pick. So let's get started with the chilling challenge. I'm gonna build this in a drink mixer tin, but you can shake this as well. Start with one dash of Pernod or Absinthe. I'm using the Japanese style bottles here, so I need two dashes. Two dashes of Angostura bitters, quarter ounce of ginger syrup, quarter ounce of honey syrup, half an ounce of lime juice, one ounce of pineapple juice, and two ounces of Smith & Cross rum. Add one cup of ice and flash blend. Pour into a double rocks glass. I'm gonna garnish this with mint, a lime wedge, and three cherries here to represent our three hitchhiking ghosts. So there you go, the chilling challenge from Trader Sam's.
Red White's very familiar, just like a lot of other drinks. In fact, when I saw this recipe, I thought that well, there's no way this is not a Dawn the Beachcomber drink. So I looked, it's it's not um these exact ingredients, at least, are not combined together to form a drink inside of the total tiki app, at least. But the reason that leans into the Dawn the Beachcomber drinks to me is that absinthe or perno uh herb saint flavor. So you're getting that black licorice sort of herby mintiness. It's something that often overwhelms a drink. And I think in this case, it's borderline. You could use less here if you wanted to, but that's what I think distinguishes this uh, for being one of those style of drinks. If you don't have a bottle or access to Smith and Cross, you could sell it out for something else, just a funky, flavorful Jamaican rum. But what's interesting is two ounces of this, even though we don't know if that's really in the drink in the original recipe, doesn't seem like a typical Disney drink, but even though, you know, Trader Sam's does do that. They use, uh, they use unique rums. They have a great rum selection, but I thought that the Smith and Cross might overpower the drink, but those other spices in there, the ginger syrup, some of that honey, but definitely the Pernod or absinthe, it cuts through the Smith and Cross. I think you need Smith and Cross or something funky in this drink to come through. Otherwise it's going to get lost. If you don't like Pernod or absinthe, I mean, this is going to be something you probably won't like. So if you don't like those flavors, you'd probably leave them out. If you don't like that licorice, anise, fennel type flavor, then I would omit that in this drink. But outside of that, it's very much a traditional, tropical, you know, tiki drink out of the sort of Dawn the Beachcomber template. I think it's great. I love that it's has this sort of connection to Halloween and Disney, but not really. Uh, it's not gimmicky. It's not um, using some type of pumpkin puree or some type of purple orange syrup goop in here. It's just a good cocktail. It's a really good nod to Don the Beachcomber drinks, something that was served at Trader Sam's about seven years ago, and something that is not really out there. So if you need a drink for this Halloween or even this fall season, try the Chilling Challenge from Trader Sam's. It's delicious. So that's it for this one. I'm Derek, this is Make and Drink. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like below. Consider subscribing to the channel. Check out the Patreon page if you haven't already. And as for me, I mean, I am a pirates guy. I was a scaredy cat as a kid, but I do love the Haunted Mansion now, especially the holiday Jack Skellington overlay. But um, I'm a pirates guy. And if you go on the pirates ride, pirates movies, you look at this bar, what does it all have in common? Obviously, it's the rub.